Okay, thank you uh, for inviting me to speak about uh, um, a study we did on uh, the GIR cohort. So I will uh, tell you about a study of, on the long-term follow-up of and optimization of interleukin inhibitors in the management of monogenic autoinflammatory diseases. The primary objective of our work was to evaluate the consistency of dosing of EL1 inhibitors in hereditary recurrent fever syndromes based on the European Medicines Agency labeled recommendations. And as a secondary objective, we wanted to analyze the reasons for the discrepancies with the product recommendations and to assess the overall safety profile of EL1 inhibitors in uh, recurrent fever syndromes. For the methods, we used uh, the GIR cohort and uh, we made a retrospective analysis of patients from the French centers, pediatric and adult centers with complete history data and at least one completed follow up visit. And the patients had to have one monogenic autoinflammatory recurrent fever syndrome, uh, CAPS, TRAPS, FMF, and MKD. And they needed to uh, have the Euro fever print to classification criteria and they needed to receive at least once during their follow-up um, in the EL1 inhibitor. The export of patients took uh, place on the 12th June on 2017. That was one month before the marketing authorization of canakinumab in France in order to avoid an inference of the marketing authorization on the observed dosages of the patients. So we uh, took really the, a visit before June uh, 2017. The patients were classified into three groups. Uh, the first group was a standard dosage, uh, anakinua 100 milligram per day, and canakinumab that depended on the indication. For CAPS patients, it was 150 milligram per, uh, uh, every eight weeks. And for the other recurrent fever syndromes, uh, we uh, took 150 milligram every four weeks. That is uh, uh, the European recommendation about dosing uh, in uh, these recurrent fever syndromes. Then we had a second group with lower than recommended dosages, patients treated with lower or less frequent injections than the, than the standard dose. And the third group was an intensified dosage, patients who received higher dosages or more frequent injection, injections than the standard dose. Then we performed a descriptive analysis of the treatment modalities of our patients. Uh, and we described uh, the advice and events which ret uh, were retrieved according to the MEDRA terminology. So we had a classification by the investigators of the intensity, of the seriousness, the relationship between the medication and the event, and the consequences on the administration of the treatment. And adverse events were then expressed as absolute number of events during the whole follow-up or as number of events per 100 patient year. So here were our results. In June 2017, we had 166 French patients with a hereditary recurrent fever syndrome in the GIA cohort. Of those, uh, we had 18 CAPS, 32 TRAPS patients, 106 FMF patients, and 10 MKD patients. Uh, uh, here you see the patients who were treated with EL1 inhibitors. All of our CAPS patients had received EL1 inhibitors, but only uh, uh, and uh, but only uh, eight patients, TRAPS patients, had an EL1 inhibitor. Uh, either canakinumab or anakinua or both, uh, so 13 FMF patients and six MKD patients of uh, the whole cohort. So here you can see the posology of the different treatments. Anakinua posology or dosages were uh, uh, expressed here for CAPS patients, 100% of the patients who received anakinua uh, were consistent with the European RCP recommendations. Uh, for FMF, 44% received lower dosages than the, uh, the recommended dosages. 56 who had, uh, had normal uh, dosages. For TRAPS patients, even lower dosages uh, for anakinua. And for MKD, only uh, those who were uh, stipulated in the product recommendations. For canakinumab, the same we found lower, global lower dosages than the recommended doses. Only uh, MKD patients received the intensified dosage uh, uh, that could be given to some of them. Most of them had lower dosages as in FMF and TRAPS patients. <laughs> 
So the reasons for these differences of dosage, low, lower dosage of anakinoa uh, were due to on-demand regimens. Uh, two FMF patients and three Krebs patients received an on-demand regimen only when they had a, a, an inflammatory flare, uh, they uh, took the anakinoa uh, and uh, some had the maintenance treatment by injections every other day. Uh, for the conakinomod lower dosages, uh, we found espe uh, especially less frequent injections than those stipulated, uh, varying from every six weeks to every 10 weeks, whereas in the uh, product recommendations uh, for uh, the recurrent fever syndromes, it is stipulated to give it every four weeks. And the reinforced regimen was necessary only in MKD patients. We looked also to the retention rate of canakinumab and versus anakinua. And on this graph, you can see that the patients stayed with the canakinumab over the time, whereas the uh, uh, anakinua uh, was stopped normally uh, in the most patients to go to the uh, canakinumab treatment. So it's more difficult to have a good retention rate in anakinua than in uh, uh, canakinumab. If you look to the side effects, the global side effect rate was 17.1 uh, per 100 patient year. We had no significant difference between anakinua and canakinumab on the global safety uh, profile. And the most important uh, uh, side effects we observed were, were infections. So this is really consi consistent with the literature. So globally, we can say that we have a good safety profile of EL1 inhibitors in recurrent fever syndromes and severe adverse events with EL1 inhibitors uh, um, uh, are probably related to the underlying disease and not so much to uh, EL1 inhibitors. The limits of our study is the retrospective design. Indeed, it was impossible for us to retrieve a standardized disease, disease activity score on the res, retrospective basis. And we, so we were, uh, it was necessary for us to have an indirect, an indirect estimation of disease activity through the adaptations of therapies deci uh, decided by the investigating physician. And then uh, the second limit uh, was the heterogeneity of our sample, uh, particularly concerning diseases. But it was, uh, however, very interesting to see uh, that the dosage in uh, the three uh, um, uh, recurrent fever syndromes were lower than those recommended in uh, the uh, European recommendation. So in conclusion, we could say that EL1 inhibitors are a good treatment option for patients with a hereditary recurrent fever syndrome. The individual need of EL1 inhibitors to control the disease seems highly variable. About 45 of our patients responded well to low dosages of EL1 inhibitors. And on-demand treatment with a short half-life uh, EL1 inhibitor may be a treatment option for some selected patients with a recurrent hereditary fever syndrome, especially in FMF and TRAPS in our series. So thank you very much for your attention, and hopefully we will see you uh, for future st studies on the GEO cohort.